Alrighty, so I have the patch notes for update 17.2 in front of me. And this time around, I wanted to try something different. So I made a quicker version of the patch notes, a TLDR version, which I posted on YouTube. So I'll leave that link above and also down below if you're interested in checking it out. It's only a minute and a half going over all the things in the update, but it is a tradition on my channel to go through the full patch notes, share my experience on the test server, give some of my reaction feedback to this. So that's why I am here doing this video. I have fun doing this and hopefully you guys enjoy it, but it is a longer one. So we'll get right into it. And first and foremost, starting off for when this is going to the live server and when we be able to play. This is going live on May 11th, which is next Wednesday on PC. And then the following Thursday on May 19th for console, this is the typical schedule. And uh, this isn't a huge update, but there's a lot of stuff packed into here. Uh, a lot of quality of life things, I would say. And no word yet on Kiki and when that is going live. I suspect sometime in the summer, uh, but there's still no exact information. Just a lot of leaks that have kind of changed over time. And one of the first things we have here is a nerf to one of the tactical gears. And this is the spotter scope. And honestly, this is a lot of text here. <laughs> this is where the TLDR version comes in handy. Uh, because they really did a big nerf to this thing. And I was reading through it this morning and I was like, oh man, this is a lot of text. This is a lot to go through. Uh, so I think I'm better off just explaining to you guys how it works in game now compared to how it was before. So in the past, you would just look at people, you could look in any direction. And if they were there, even if they were kind of blocked by tree or grass or bush, they would pop up with a gray marker, which is called the passive marker above their head. And then if you hit right trigger or clicked and you mark them, uh, then it they would pop up with a red marker above their head for seven seconds. And you could see them behind rocks and through the different terrain and all those different things. So this time around, with this update, it's getting nerfed in pretty much every single way. So first and foremost, the enemy detection has been nerfed from 1,000 to 600 meters. Then also when you aim down the spotter scope, people just don't pop up in the passive gray mark. You actually have to scan for enemies, and that takes a couple seconds to go through and scan. So you have to load, then it scans, and then they pop up gray. Then you have to select them as red, and then they only stay red and tracked for three seconds. Uh, so this might not sound like a big difference, but it's really hard to stay locked on to somebody for that long because a lot of times people are going into cover or maybe going behind terrain or behind a rock. So it's very hard to do this. And you have to be out in the open more as the person with the spotter scope. So in my opinion, um, this might change when it goes to live server and more and more people are using it. But right now, I think that this got nerfed into oblivion and, and kind of is is pointless and we'll see um if they make any changes to this or if people end up using it but right now for me i feel like this is going to be pretty tough with those changes uh then we got a weapon balance we finally got a buff to the mortar which is uh very much needed this was a very fun and interesting thing brought into tago only uh but it's almost impossible to get a kill with this thing it's not impossible people do it but it's very hard uh so now they're implementing it on all maps except for the um, Haven, which makes sense, right? Because Haven's such a small map with high buildings. You can now put this down on pretty much any terrain, uh, which is nice because before it was blocked in many different areas if there was like concrete on the ground or some rocks or pebbles or whatever. So now you can do this on sand, snow, and even on top of buildings, which I don't know if that was necessary, but that's where they're going with it. And now it takes up even less inventory space. You can put it into your inventory directly, uh, like a bike. Before you couldn't do that, it had to take up a primary slot. So you can put it into your inventory. It takes up less space, and it's just a lot easier to use overall. So that that's really nice, and you can actually re-equip it. Um, so I feel like people are going to be willing to take this now, especially because it's on all the maps, and you can have it in your inventory. So definitely, I actually got my first kill with it today um, on the test server, which was awesome. And I think that was a combination of being able to have more ammo, which was nice, more shots, and then also having uh, the spotter scope with me as well, which was nice. But it's easier to kind of swap with your secondary weapon now that you can hold it in your inventory. And I've said that like three times now. And then um, an additional weapon stuff here they talk about the mk12 and mini both these getting a slight buff the mini got a one damage increase so this isn't huge but kind of noticeable there while the mk mk's buff is very small i mean it's just inc increased recoil recovery and rebalance the recoil recoil related speed i tried to test this out on pc but since i play on controller mostly it's hard for me to compare because recoil is different on pc it's actually double that of console or console is half um, so I couldn't really notice it in that instance, um, but we'll have to see when people play with this, if, if they see a difference to help control the MK and then the mini just kind of helping it out a little bit there. 
Then we go down to map service. This is probably going to be one of the best map services ever. We have Erangal, Miramar, Tego, Sanok, and then Vikendi is coming in for Haven. Erangal, Miramar, Sanok, and Vikendi are some of my favorite maps out there. I like Miramar, but I don't want to play it every single time. Um, but overall, this is great five maps. And for people that aren't aware, PUBG is constantly going to be rotating in and out five maps. And they said in the past that Aaron Gall and Miramar will always be in the rotation. So until that changes, that's what we're going to see. And because Ranked is including Tago now, I think Tago might be one of the maps that they're always going to be including. Um, and then kind of rotating out the Sada, Haven, Vikendi, kind of Karakin, Paramo maps at the back end. But we'll see how that works, especially with Kiki coming in. I have no idea how that's going to work. And then we have a B-Duck collaboration. So this is a brand that is out of Hong Kong, and they do a lot of uh, giant ducks and duck things and rubber duckies. But they also do collaborations with, like, there's a B-Duck cafe and stores. And it seems like they partner with a lot of different brands, and it's very popular in Hong Kong. But nonetheless, I've never heard of them, and it's coming into PUBG, and you're going to be able to see them in the water on Sanok. It says that um, you can't, like, destroy them or anything like that but this is pretty big cover if they're really this size um it's going to be a huge huge cover in the water uh, it'd be interesting to see if people can like get on top of those or, or what they do for a joke and then there's some slight uh, weather changes here for and textures and the terrain for miramar have been adjusted to kind of help with the yellow uh glare and shade they were saying uh, here's before and after uh, you know i guess it looks a little bit more clear i like that um on the right and then a pretty big part of the update is this 1v1 arena. We kind of knew this was coming into the game. I think PUBG mentioned it, but also when you looked at this, when it got implemented in the training mode, this shape, this item, I pretty much called it that they were going to be doing this. And it's a 1v1 arena, kind of like the Gulag in Call of Duty. Who knows if they're eventually going to kind of incorporate this into the comeback uh, arena or comeback BR. Uh, but it's very cool. You can queue up in there and fight. You can pick what weapons you're going to have. So you don't have the same weapons, so it's not completely fair. Um, but I guess it's a good way to balance it. You can just choose what weapon you want to go in. And if you go in without a weapon, you will be given level 3 gear and an M4 and an SKS default. So you always will have level 3 gear. And then you can also go in and spectate as well. I think a couple things that they probably need to fix here is that right now, you can only do this through the training mode and then if you're queuing for ranked but this should probably be available like in the arcade section or for anybody that's queuing into a game and then also people should be able to spectate without like really queuing and that will help because right now i was in a training mode on pc early in the morning there was people to 1v1 but then later in the afternoon nobody was in the training mode so i actually couldn't 1v1 anybody which was kind of a bummer i know we're on the test server but it's just kind of you know, it doesn't hurt the queues because it's in training mode. It's in a separate queue. So it actually isn't hurting the main queues, but it's another queue, you know, within a queue um, that, you you know, there has to be people there for it to populate. And then also I should mention that it's best out of three. So it's the first person to win two rounds, wins the 1v1. So you have to win two. If you win two in a row, then it's over. I think that's fine for right now, but we'll see if they make any changes to that in the future. I enjoyed it, but it was very hard to do this on PC because I don't play on PC. And then we sort of have a quality of life thing here. This is for the training mode. You can actually teleport to different uh, points of interest on the map now. So you can just go to the shooting range, to the aim labs, um, firing range, where the grenades are, practice range, all that stuff by just clicking on it in the menu, which is really nice. And then also they've kind of improved upon the aim slash sound lab scoring system. So they give you extra points now uh, for hitting different targets and with different speed and accuracy and stuff like that. So you can see the different points here. Um, but basically when I'm doing these things, I'm more just going for how many I'm getting right. Not really how fast. Well, I am doing, I'm trying to do it as fast as I can, but I'm not really checking my score. I just want to see how many kills I got, but nonetheless, just making it better. And then also you can create, I was kind of confused by this in the patch notes, uh, but you can create your own training mode in custom match now to enjoy with your friends. So basically this is twofold. You can go in in 1v1 with a friend if you want to, instead of having to go into your training mode, you guys can queue in. And then this can also make uh, the training, the 1v1 and FPP, because what the 1v1 is in TPP, a lot of people are going to be mad at that. So if you want to FPP 1v1 your friend, you can start up your own training mode. Then also, if you're just tired of, you know, having people shoot at you, or maybe you want to test some things out with your buddies, you can go into your training mode with like four or five, six, however many people, uh, the maximum number is 32 and you can practice things, test things. And this is really great. Honestly, it gives people a better way to practice. And it's kind of boring when you're in the training mode by yourself. And again, if you're getting shot at or run over by random people, it's not always an enjoyable experience. So it's awesome that PUBG is allowing 
people to do that. And then the tutorial has kind of um, seen a little bit of quality of life, but this is for new players, so I'm going to skip over that. And then PUBG has their next Survivor Pass, which is the Galaxy Squad. If you see the branding around this, it reminded me and a lot of other people of Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, but I will say that uh, while these are not realistic skins that a lot of people are always talking about or wanting or kind of complaining about, um, I actually kind of enjoy these skins. They're they're kind of they're ridiculous, but they're really fun. And I have a video on my channel going over the Survivor Pass if you guys are interested in seeing it. I get them for free, but I would definitely buy this one. I just think there's a lot of cool skins in here. And again, it's a lot of fun to repeat myself. And then here's a controversial change, controversial change, excuse me. And this is a throwables timer. And I see people are kind of, you know, 50-50 on this just uh, off the bat. You know, this that's not a real uh, number. Anecdotally, people just seem to be 50-50 on it. Um, I know Ben from the Beard Guys was not a fan of this. And I've seen a lot of people's feedback. A lot of people in the stream thought it was okay. When you go to use a throwable, you're going to see this timer on the right. It's not actually counting down like one, two, three, four, five. The bar is kind of filling up. And I have a couple different thoughts on this just very quickly. So first, I feel like any advanced player in this game is really good at cooking nades, right? If you've been playing for a long time, you're probably pretty good at cooking nades. So this isn't really going to change anything. Um, if anything, I was kind of confused whether I should just trust myself or go off the, the, the gauge because I'm not used to the gauge. I don't know what exactly... You know, if it's in the fourth bar, does that mean it's about to blow up in my hand? Is that force? I guess it's each second. But... I personally felt like I could do a better job just counting in my head than following the gauge because I knew exactly how I count every time, um, you know, and, and I'm kind of used to that whole system. But obviously with the gauge, people are going to be able to really get this down to a science. And if you just start focusing on that gauge and getting really used to it over time, people are going to get like perfect with it. So it's, everyone's going to be better with nades. And then people that weren't great with nades are going to get better. So it could make your nades even stronger. And it's also kind of putting training wheels on the game where PUBG notoriously known for not having stuff like that. Um, but then also on the other hand, again, we got to help new players with the game. It's it's such a tough game as it is. Um, you know, why not put these little things in there to help people? And like I mentioned on stream today, there's timers for when you heal somebody, when you heal yourself with a first aid or a med kit. So it's not like this game is just missing timers. It's not like we're counting to eight when we're using a first aid. Those timers are in the game. So I don't feel like this is totally out of the realm of PUBG, but I also don't want to see PUBG go down the road of putting in hit markers and where you're getting shot from. That's very PUBG mobile-esque. And, you know, after seeing this change, I feel like we could almost see PUBG do that in the future. Um, but I don't know. I just don't know what I feel about that. Is that really going to ruin my day if they tell you where you're getting shot from? I think it's such a fun skill that we've learned in PUBG, but it does keep so many people from playing the game. It's like one of those things. How do you know what's better for the game? And at the end of the day, we want more people to play the game. And if it's hardcore and nobody plays it, then I've always said, what's the point, right? I, I want a hardcore game to play, but if nobody plays it, that's, it is what it is, I suppose. Um, so definitely want to hear what you guys think down in the comments below, for sure. Kind of an extended uh, conversation about timers and the future of PUBG. And then another interesting change for kind of to help new players, and this is this loot recommendation. And, and this is pretty interesting here. Um, again, there's a lot of text. I was like reading through this. I'm like, this is one of those things that I prefer to test out and get an understanding of. So basically, I'll hopefully have some footage up here on the screen. If not... Um, I didn't feel like putting it in, but, um, for when you are running around the battlegrounds, we were testing it out in training mode. If you have, let's say no armor on, you just drop and you pick up the new ACE, which is a seven, six, two gun. And you don't have a vest, you don't have a bag or anything, anything that's seven, six, two on the ground will now have an arrow pointing to it, letting you know, like that's the ammo you need to pick up, not nine millimeter, not five, five, six. And then all of the vest backpack and all that stuff will have an arrow on it. And then as soon as you pick up a backpack, say you pick up a level two backpack, then the level one backpack would not have an arrow on it. If you pick up a level one backpack and there's a level two next to it, that level two backpack will still have an arrow on it, letting you know that that backpack is better. Same thing if you have a you know level two helmet and you see a level three helmet on Vikendi, that level three helmet would have a, a arrow on it, letting you know that that helmet is better better and this only works for ammo for your gun for your vest your helmet and your backpack we tried it for scopes and other items and med kits and stuff like that um, i thought that it mentioned something about 
first aids and stuff like that um, but that did not work in the game but also there was a bug with it it's only supposed to work for the gun that you have out not your uh, secondary gun and it was showing all the guns that i needed the ammo for even my pistol slot so there could be some bugs with this it's just on a test server and obviously all this stuff is always subject to change in the future so if you're listening to this in the future it could be definitely different uh this is one of those things it's definitely like a training wheels type thing um you know as a veteran player we all know what to do um but i guess if you're new you might have trouble looting i wonder if this is people have trouble looting i think because of the menu screen not because they can't see or find things um so i don't know if this is really going to help anybody um but i guess PUBG will see the feedback and again they could always remove it if everybody hates it um but it is interesting or it could be something that maybe people toggle off or are only for uh, players under a certain level there was a lot of feedback saying that maybe just do this for until you're level 50 or level 100, and then it goes away. And I, I feel like that would be fine, in my opinion. Um, then next, another kind of quality of life thing here, and this is you can now use uh, healing items in the driver's seat, but only for boosters and bandages, which is kind of the standard for when you're in a vehicle. Uh, but again, this is a first. You can actually do it when you're driving instead of having to swap seats by yourself or with somebody else. Um, but then you can't use any other features. You can't steer, you can't auto drive. The only thing you can do is accelerate forward. So while you're driving, you can do it. And I was able to do this in the Burdum and it was very easy. And um, again, taking a little bit of strategy out of the game, but it does make sense that makes sense that you could drink an energy drink while driving, I guess. So again, it's not that far out of the realm of realism and, and video game possibility. Um, I think this is totally fine, but I, I could see people arguing again the other way, but I think that's totally fine improvement to the game. And then we just have some increases to UI performance and bug fixes. Um, I feel like I, I always miss some kind of interesting bug fix, but I, I skimmed through these before. I didn't see anything too interesting. Um, so we'll just uh, have to leave it at that for right now. So that's it. We have the new survivor pass. We have, you can drink and drive now. Oh, well, you can heal and drive, um, looting recommendation for new players mostly throwable timer which is interesting and then we have the 1v1 and the whole training mode kind of uh continuous updates it's been getting a lot of updates over time just getting better and better constantly improving and then we have uh improvements or buffs to the mk the mini mostly was one damage the mortar is now much better and then taking it all the way to the top we had a big nerf on the spotter scope so that's pretty much it for update 17.2. PUBG is rolling on. And if you want to catch any of the action live, I'm going to be playing this when it goes live on PC and on console um, on my Twitch page at twitch.tv slash blitz5 and friends. If you guys enjoyed this video, please drop a like and be sure to subscribe to check out my future content. And as always, thank you all for watching. I'm Blitz5 and peace out.